the Advent acclamation on page three of your service booklet. Our King and Saviour now draws near. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow 
and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the prophecies and promises given to the patriarchs, in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come. The one who rises to rule the Gentiles in him, the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. be seated. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse. The reading from the Hebrew scriptures opens with this peculiar and strange image. Maybe it's obvious to many of you, but I needed to look into it a little bit because this year, for some reason, this image intrigued me. Why does Jesse have a stump, and why does it have a shoot coming out? I'm a little slow. 
So it may be helpful to back up a few verses to see where we pick up in this conversation. The previous verses in Isaiah talk about the glory of the forest that will will be destroyed. And write that there will be so few trees that a child can write them down. The tallest trees will be cut down and the lofty will be brought low. We enter the prophet's judgment of the people of God at a time when the political situation they find themselves in is in stark contrast to God's longing for them. When their religious imagination in Israel is crying out for something new. It's a time when the prophet writes harshly about the neglect of the poor and the needy, the orphan and the widow. The prophet writes poetically and angrily that this mistreatment of the most vulnerable has caused a blight upon the nation, a blight caused by their own neglect, and that that blight will spread to the very aggressors that perpetuated the mistreatment. As Israel has capitulated itself to the political whims of the world around it, its people have become more divided and prey to worldly motivation. They have forgotten what it means to love the Lord and to love neighbor. Historically, at this point, Jerusalem has become captive to Assyria, with Israel's people spread among their captors' empire. It's the beginning of not just decades, but centuries of captivity from different empires. For hundreds of years, this very text of Isaiah would be fine-tuned to highlight the plight of the dispersed people of Israel, people who are holding on to the hope that God still had a place for them somewhere. So our passage this morning from the Hebrew Scriptures opens with this scene of desolation, this scene of a, of a decimated, of a lifeless forest as a metaphor for the decimation of Israel. We don't have to look very far, I don't think, to identify with the prophet right now. Division runs rampant, not only in our nation, but in the whole world. You can hear the groans of humanity crying out from the images of a a dead Syrian refugee boy on the beach in what seems like ages ago, but was just a few months. Or another lifeless refugee boy carried in his father's arms as they sought sanctuary in this country. We can hear the cries of creation as the glaciers melt and the oceans rise, as the birds shrink in size and the fish disappear from the sea. Our forests are literally disappearing. It's not hard to identify with the prophet's image of feeling as if we are in a forest and the forest is burning. And it's burning fast. The story of the loss of hope is not new. The people of God have been here before. In the desolation, there is a lifeless stump that appears to be all that's left 
of the beautiful forest. O oh God, will you hear the groans of your people, of all of creation, crying out? And from a stump, seemingly lifeless and apparently desolate, there will come new life, says the prophet Isaiah. This new life imagined by the prophet, it's not like the old. God's imagination is not like ours. The new life imagined by God as a response to the groans of creation, it's incomprehensible to us. Shall we let our wolves be prey? Shall we let the wolves wander over to stay with our lambs? Ridiculous. Will I let my child play with snakes? You're out of your mind. But God's love is so big that we cannot fathom the peaceable kingdom depicted by the prophet. It's unimaginable. What kind of peaceable kingdom do you yearn for? And if it's beyond our imagination, this peaceable kingdom, I'm not sure that the details matter that much. Because what matters is the belief that there's something bigger, something more than I can imagine or you. What matters is the promise of a vision that's beyond us. What matters in Isaiah's beautiful vision is that it brings hope in this desolate forest. Hope, the tiny shoot, tender and delicate, emerging from a dead stump in a felled forest. Hope that it can be different. Hope in the God who dreamed up the stars and the mountains and the lion and the lamb, that this same God has the capability to dream up a new ending than the only one we can see before us. Hope in the God who created humanity in all of our beautiful diversity, that there in that God, there is also the capability to instill peace in a way that just escapes us. The prophet does not call for the listener to create this peaceable kingdom. The prophet says that the anointed one, the one we wait for, will do that. But by instilling hope in a new ending, by planting a seed that a new tendril can unwrap its precious leaves from what looks like an old dead stump, that perhaps gives us strength to act differently. Strength to keep going anyway. Hope itself changes things. Advent is a time to turn from despair and hope in an ending to this story that we can't otherwise believe is possible. Because with hope, anything is possible. I ran across a story this week of two unlikely people interacting on social media. I don't know if you know this, but social media is not a place known for interactions depicting the peaceable kingdom. (laughs) 
In it, an angry parent of a trans boy wrote to a well-known gender non-binary model named Rain Dove. The conversation opened with the mom's projection of anger directed towards Rain. My child is sick due to you. I'm not sure how I would respond in that situation. I might likely just ignore it, but Rain responded to each successive comment with compassion and with empathy, saying things like, how are you feeling about this? Does it feel heavy? And for you to be reaching out to me about it shows that you must care about your child's well-being and happiness. The mom's attacks continued, but they diminished in veracity, saying things, moving from things like, my child hates her body because of perverts like you, to why would my child do this to herself? Rain continued to ask questions about the child, affirming the mom's love and concern for the child and helping the mom come to an understanding of what her child was going through. In the end, the mom began asking Rain about the changes her child was undergoing and if she should contact, if she could contact Rain, if she had any more questions. They closed the conversation with XXX, each of them. Rain had hope in a different future than the one we have come to begin to believe in from the world around us. That hope made a change possible in Rain's responses, and those responses led to a change in other people's lives, the lives of that mom and her vulnerable child. I pray that as we go deeper into this Advent, we can quiet, that the whole creation can, in the midst of our groans, still, still just long enough to hear a voice crying in the wilderness. There it is. <laughs> a voice that points to new life emerging from dead places. A place of hope as we watch and we wait for the one who has something in mind for us that's bigger than any of us can ask or imagine.
Form 3, page 387. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Remembering especially Augie Matt, Ken Brown, Carol Winningham, Marsha Colger, James Oliver, Eileen McDade, and for those we now name. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for James McLeod, Molly McLeod, Brad Loveless, Jim Carroll and family, Krista Vragel Murray, Babs France, Joe O'Rourke, Chris Brooks, Martin Green and family, Stacy Sullivan, Sean Coughlin, Rue Karn, Diane Brown and the Peeling family, George Winningham Jr., Randy Myers, Joan Bond, Susan McClure, Lana and Chris Ford, Joan, Dorothy, and Juan Carlos Erge Arena. And for those we now name. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life, especially for first responders and all who risk their own safety to help others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The confession is found on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
My name is Penny Bridges. I serve as the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral, and it's my joy to welcome you this morning, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith. Please know that you are most welcome to participate in all that we do here at St. Paul's. God's table is open to everyone, and at communion time, as you come forward, if you wish to receive the sacrament, uh, put your hands together, one on top of the other. If you prefer to receive a blessing, cross your hands at your shoulders, and if you require a gluten-free wafer, they will be available over here by the large oil painting. If you are visiting with us, new to our community, a special welcome to you. I hope you'll introduce yourself, uh, fill out one of the newcomer cards um, in the pew in front of you, um, or stop by the welcome table in the cloister right outside here after the service um, and in tell us a little about yourself. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week, I invite you to stand as I say a prayer for you. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Many happy returns. Uh, there will be a coffee and soup today in the Great Hall following the service, so cross the courtyard and right up the stairs. And the Alternative Gifts Expo is well underway. Many of you have already done some Christmas shopping there this morning. It will continue until, I think, 1.30 um, this afternoon. So after the service, I hope you'll stay and uh, do some shopping, support some good causes. There are some really beautiful things over there, um, so I encourage you to participate. If, um, if the stairs up to the Great Hall present a challenge for you, we have uh, Deb Hirsch, a parishioner, will be uh, out here right outside the door ready to help. There's a table and chairs under shelter um, on this level, and um, she, will, she will be happy to run up and down the stairs and bring you pictures of things and, um, and show you items uh, so that you don't have to feel left out um, of, the, of the Alternative Gifts Expo. Please pray hard for our elevator to be fixed. It may be rebuilt and finished by the end of next week, so we're hoping, we're hoping. Yeah, it would be great to have it back, wouldn't it? Um, that, let's see, what, oh, and, and between 12 and 12.15, I am going to draw the winning tickets for the raffle for the gala tickets. Um, as you know, we have our 150th anniversary gala in this very space on Friday night. Um, we are sold out of the $300 dinner tickets, but we have several to give away thanks to generous donors. So um, you'll have a chance after the service to buy a $20 chance. Um, and if your ticket is drawn, you'll get two of those tickets uh, for the gala dinner. So it's a really good deal. Um, and uh, Susan Jester, I think, will be in the, in the back of the Great Hall selling those tickets after the service. Um, and then I'll, I'll draw the four winners. Um, like I said, between 12 and 12.15. 12, um, this afternoon, instead of our five o'clock even song that we usually have on Sunday afternoons, we'll have the annual Messiah sing-along with the San Diego Master Chorale. Um, so everyone is invited. There are usually like 500 people here, a big crowd. So it doesn't matter how well or how badly you sing. You can just come and be part of the crowd and nobody will know, and it's really fun. Uh, we'll have wonderful professional soloists and conductor. Martin Green will accompany us on the organ. Um, so that's at five o'clock. There is a reception preceding that at four o'clock in the Great Hall. Um, so you can come and, uh, and mingle and, uh, and then come on over here at five for the Messiah. Tomorrow afternoon at five o'clock, we will celebrate the life of parishioner Augie Matt with a requiem Eucharist, um, and all are welcome to attend that bilingual service. Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, I hear a phone. Hello? 
Oh, hi, hello. This is Jeff Martin Hawk calling, calling from St. Paul's Cathedral. Am I am I speaking to the Reverend, the very Reverend uh, Penny Bridges? You are. Hi, Jeff. Oh, I'm so glad to get a hold of you. I just wanted to call and thank you for your generous past support of the cathedral. Um, as you may know, we are wrapping up our annual pledge campaign for the cathedral, and we are so close to reaching our goal. This year, if we reach that goal, we will have a balanced budget for the first time in a very long time, and I'm hoping we can count on your support to do that this year again. But I thought I'd already pledged. I could oh, well, swear. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got a hold of you then, for, because for some reason we do not have your pledge on file. Ah, well, you know, I thought the pledge campaign was over and, and that you were done and you didn't need my pledge anymore. Oh, well, we need everybody's pledge because with everyone's support, we will be able to, again, to meet that goal and to balance the budget this year. So with the pledge campaign, while the witnesses are done and the uh, very public phase of the campaign is over, we are still counting on everybody's support to reach our goal this year. Mm. You, you know, I really don't like having someone call and tell me what to pledge. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you gave me the opportunity to clarify that because I am not here at all uh, to, to tell you uh, what to pledge, just here as a gentle reminder because I knew that you would want the opportunity to participate in this year's campaign. Well, that's, that's true. It's, it's good to have an opportunity to support the church that I love, and um, I, I appreciate the gentle reminder, and you can count on my pledge. Wonderful, and you don't have to pledge with me right here on the phone. If you're uncomfortable doing that, you can pledge online, through email, in the pledge card from the pew racks that are in front of you, which if you happen to be in the church right this very minute, you could pull out one <laughs> and do, uh, and a variety of other ways. So I'm so glad to, that I can count on your support. Well, you're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Need we say more? <laughs> Please stand as you're able. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Paul, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. table not of the church but of Jesus Christ it is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more 
So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little, you who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time or ever before, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed, come not because the church invites you. It is Christ, and he invites you to meet him here, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Turning to page 365 in the Red Prayer Book, let us pray. Page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Don't. I'll send you forth after the service. congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that John Davis may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share in one bread and one cup. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Oh my goodness, who could that be? Surely only a bishop would knock like that in the middle of the service. Why, look, we do have a bishop visiting. Please come in, sir, and tell us who you are. <laughs> Blessed Advent to one and all. My name is Nicholas of Myra, but some of you may know me better by my nickname, Santa Claus. Tell us, St. Nicholas, where do you come from? I come from Myra in Asia Minor, far away to the east of Europe and across 17 centuries. A long, long journey. My goodness, and I guess you've chosen today to visit us because we celebrated your feast day this week. But why are you visiting us at St. Paul's? Over many centuries, I have loved and protected children and tried to teach them the joy of preparing for the Christ child. That is why I try to visit all of you every year during the season. I see. So it is Advent, and I see that you, had, you brought a basket that's got coins 
and candy canes. Candy canes, yes. Why are you carrying those? They're gifts for the children. The coins remind us of the time I ransomed three young girls from being sold into marriage. The candy cane is a symbol of my bishop's staff. The red and white stripes represent the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Will you say a prayer? I'd be happy to pray. Let us pray. Loving God, may these sweets be a sign of Advent joy for us. May these candy canes and coins be for us a sign of your benevolent care. Whenever we give or receive the coins, may they remind us that all people deserve freedom and dignity. Wherever these candy canes are hung on tree or wall or door, may they carry them with them your bright blessing. May all who shall taste them experience the sweetness of your holy joy upon their tongues and in their hearts. We ask this in your name, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you stand at the door after the procession and share the gifts with us? I will. 